good afternoon from india i oman but student of school of civil engineering lpu being a co-chair of the session welcome you all to the geotechnical engineering webinar series geo live 2021 organized by school of civil engineering lovely professional university in association with igs jalandhar chapter and dr b r ambedkar national institute of technology jalandhar dear ma'am on behalf of School of Civil Engineering, Lovely Professional University, IGS, Jalandhar Chapter, and Department of Civil Engineering, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, National Institute of Technology, Jalandhar, I welcome you for the session on the topic, FEM Analysis of Dynamic Behavior of Fully Coupled Tunnel Soil Above Ground Structures. The session is chaired by Dr. Amit Shirvastava, Head of School of Civil Engineering, Lovely Professional University, and will be co-chaired by me. Now I request Dr. Amit Shirivastava to take over the session as chair and start the proceedings. Thank you, Oman, for this energetic uh, start. Uh, it, gives, it gives me immense pleasure to introduce Professor Maria on our, to our audience who have joined us on this Google Meet platform. Professor Maria Rosle is an associate professor of geotechnical engineering at the University of Catania. In 2017, he obtained the National Academy qualification as full professor in geochemical, geotechnical engineering. She won the IGS student award, the Premio Tonio award. I'm sorry if I could not pronounce it properly. Uh, and and a eco leader grant. She has also been the scientific director of national and international research projects. She is the head of geotechnical testing laboratory at University of Catania, and she is also the member of the lectures, lecturers committee of the PhD program in Catania editorial board of journals indexed by Scopus. Ma'am, now I hand over the session to you on the topic FEM analysis of dynamic behavior of fully coupled tunnel soil above the ground structures. Uh, for the audience, uh, please note that during the session, if you have any question, you can put the same in the chat box or you may ask to the end by unmuting yourself. Your questions will be taken care by the expert at the end only. Till then, please keep yourself muted and your video should also be turned off. Over to ma'am, sir. Uh, over to ma'am. Okay. Yeah, you can start now. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much and good afternoon. Um, so, uh, my presentation is uh, subdivided in the following steps. Uh, firstly, I would like to speak about uh, damage to tunnel soil above ground structure systems due to earthquakes. And then um, we will uh, discuss about the fundamental role of geotechnical characterization for studying the behavior of these systems. Uh, the behavior of these systems uh, is uh, um, deeply uh, influenced by tunnel soil interaction as well as fully coupled tunnel soil structure interaction. So, I will speak above all about tunnels for people transportations, which are in continuous development to contribute to solve uh, urban transportation problems. Uh, but uh, it is interesting to observe that uh, the studies that I will uh, present uh, can be used also for tunnels that transport uh, to transport ad, uh, other um, materials, dangerous materials such as gas, oil, and thus uh, cracks in these uh, special tunnels could produce greater damage to things uh, than uh, cracks in tunnel for people transportation. So, generally speaking, damage to above ground structure due to earthquakes uh, um, have been well um, investigated. 
um, why damage to underground structures are considered very, uh, very often negligible. Nevertheless, important damage can occur uh, on tunnels and on above ground structures and infra infrastructures due to important deformation along the longitudinal axis of the tunnel uh, as well and above all along the transversal um, direction of tunnels. Here you can see the famous uh, damage that occurred in uh, Daikai uh, subway station due to the 1995 Kobe earthquake and the dam or the damage that occurred in Sunny Railway Tunnel due to the 1999 Chichi earthquake and other in, important uh, damage due to um, several earthquakes. Um, uh, more, if these tunnels are used, as previously I said, uh, for the transportation of dangerous materials, uh, uh, indirect effect to the urban area can occur, as in 1995 Kobe earthquake. After the earthquake, a fire spread through the city due to significant cracks to the um, gas pipeline. So, the study of uh, uh, tunnel soil above ground structure um, systems uh, is very, very important. And uh, indirect damage can occur on the tunnels due to slope failure, fault crossing, and liquefaction. But which is the fundamental role of geotechnical, which is the role of geotechnical characterization? Of course, we, ca we, mm, we will see that this is a fundamental role. So the behavior of above ground structures, as well as uh, tunnels, strongly depend on soil behavior. Thus, static and dynamic geotechnical characterization is fundamental and has, um, has to be performed deeply. It uh, can be performed by means of in situ and laboratory tests. Uh, for dynamic problems, uh, dynamic laboratory tests such as resonant column tests triaxial cyclic test and so on are very very important not only to so it is important not only to evaluate the shear wave velocity um, but also the soil nonlinearity in terms of uh, shear modulus and damping ratio versus shear soil strain gamma uh, I will speak you about, um, I will present you uh, different cases, this case histories uh, involving the city of Catania, where I work. Uh, Catania has been uh, involved in many research projects um, on uh, in order to reduce to to reduce the high seismic risk, uh, Catania um, is characterized by a high um, medium high seismic hazard and is rich of old buildings. Uh, very often uh, building with a great monumentic, monumental historical value. This is uh, a recent, uh, um, a recent photo uh, re taken by the well-known uh, Luca Parmitano astronaut who was born in in Catania. So. Um, 
uh, an underground line um, was built in Catania. Now two more lines are under construction. The first one will connect the center of Catania to the interland. The second one will connect the center of Catania to the airport. Um, we will speak in the following about all, uh, 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 we will speak uh, about this first line, the line that connects the center of Catania to the interland. Uh, the case history of Catania is interesting for um, several reasons. Um, uh, certainly for the high uh, se um, seismic hazard, uh, as, pre as previously I said, uh, I said you. And above all, for the great heterogeneity of the soil deposit. Um, this uh, heterogeneity is due to um, the uh, great uh, volcano activity of Mount Etna, that is in uh, Catania. So, uh, the Nesima Mr. Bianco segment, sorry, this segment, this, uh, this line, uh, cover a length of about two kilometers and it is being dug using this tunnel boring machine. And uh, here you can see uh, the uh, TBM machine when it arrived at Fontana station uh, and when he, um, it left Fontana station. So, uh, as previously I said you, the strong heterogeneity of the geological profile of Catania subsoil uh, means that diggings takes place uh, in two modes, switching frequently from one mode to the other. Open phase mode, so no pressure at the TBM front, and at uh, pressure balance mode, so with a pressure at the TBM front. Uh, it is in, very important to establish um, well, mm, uh, in relation, of course, to the soil profile, the, the, the right mode, digging mode, in order to avoid important damage um, on the above ground structures and, uh, and all infrastructure and damage to the TBM. So, uh, here you can see the soil profile established during the design phase along the mm, Nesima Mr. Bianco line and the boreholes that uh, we performed. Um, of course, we can perform only a uh, um, um, precise numbers uh, number of boreholes uh, due to economic problems. So we design uh, we decided to check the soil profile established during the design phase with a simple procedure that I would like to show you. Uh, without uh, um, ad additional cost. We know that uh, um, uh, during the TB, uh, TBM digging, we have to record uh, the vibrations due to the TBM digging. Uh, in, um, in the buildings, uh, above or near the TBM Front. So we would like to use. Oh, sorry, uh, we would like to use uh, this uh, uh, this information. But previously, uh, so we performed different boreholes 
we, um, in order to detect the shear wave velocity profile with the depth, uh, by means of uh, seismic dilatometers marketed tests and by means of HVSR tests. And so we uh, were able to uh, have information on the shear wave velocity um, of all the geological formation lithotypes. We uh, performed also a dynamic test, uh, uh, above all resonant column test, in order to detect the soil nonlinearity. So the uh, variation of the shear modulus and then damping ratio uh, with the uh, soil shear strain. But uh, as I um, said before, uh, we would like to refine, um, to refine, to check the soil profile established during the design phase with a um, new um, methodology, uh, very easy to use. We can say uh, that it, the, it is an early warning alarm system. So. Um, I will show you in these uh, in these uh, in the following slides this procedure. So this is, for example, um, in one section in the underground line, and this is the TBM front, and we um, we have two geophones in order to, uh, to check the safety, to guarantee the safety of the buildings above and next uh, uh, to the TBM front. Here you can see a zoom. So this is the TBM front and this is, uh, this, uh, mm, is one of the two geophones. The distance is generally 20 meters. So, um, of course, the TBM front and geophones move, move uh, continuously. Uh, we recorded the velocity of the uh, waves produced uh, by the TBM uh, in the horizontal direction, R and T, and in the vertical direction, V. We recorded more than 100 um, uh, signals uh, per day. Then we can um, uh, estimate from these records the acceleration time histories. So we uh, uh, we um, we obtain the acceleration time histories and then we computed the Fourier spectra. Then we compute the H over V versus F curve, being H the horizontal Fourier spectra, V the vertical Fourier spectra. We did this for all the signals per day, then we compute an average curve, H over V versus F curve. This curve allowed us to estimate the natural frequency of the soil crossed by the waves produced by the TBM digging, day after day. As you can see in this uh, picture. Hmm? So, this picture refers to a period between May, to, uh, May 20, uh, 2007 and July. Uh, sorry, to 2017. So, um, each black line uh, refers, uh, reports a uh, H over V versus F curve. 
while the red line means the peak frequency estimated with this procedure day after day. So in this slide, you can see once more the red line, which uh, show the peak frequencies obtained with this procedure day after day. And the uh, dashed the blue, li blue line represent the average value that we can observe from the red line. So we compared these value values obtained with this procedure based on the recordings of the uh, TBM um, vibrations with the well-known expression analytical expression f equal bs over 4h being bs the shear wave velocity of the soil uh, the soil and h the depth of the bedrock if the value obtained with this procedure is equal to the value obtained with the well-known analytical expression based of course on the soil profile uh, estimated in the design phase we can say the old profile um, all things are okay otherwise something strange could could occur such as in that area the procedure uh, gave us for example in this area an average value equal to about 4 hertz while the analytical expression gave us a frequency a natural frequency equal to about 7.5 hertz the opposite situation occurred in that ad other area the um, our procedure gave us uh, an average value equal to about seven more than seven hertz while the analytical expression gave us uh, four hertz so this procedure uh, mm, mm, can be considered for us an early warning alarm system. So this is um, this is the zoo. Mm -hmm. uh, we performed in that area. Mm, we would like to perform in that area additional um, in situ tests. In particular, we performed other boreals and an electric tomography test. This test um, gave us another soil profile, that is this, this one, and uh, confirmed Ha, confirmed has that the, the 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 real value of the frequencies was the value obtained with the easy to use fast procedure that we developed so the new profile was this and not the profile established in the design phase um, the material extracted during the tbm digging confirmed our results uh, this information of course is very important the soil profile the information regarding the soil profile is very important to establish the best um, the best digging mod open phase or um, open phase or earth pressure balance mode hmm. okay now i would like to present you um, some um, some analysis on tunnel soil uh, system behavior
Mm -hmm. We can study tunnel soil system behavior by means of experiments or the free field approach or the elastic SSI solutions or numerical or by means of the numerical approach. Approaches mm, very often finite element approach. As regards the experiments, we can perform centrifuge tests or we can monitor real tunnels. Um, uh, I will present uh, um, a study um, where we used the uh, centrifuge at the University of Cambridge. Um, we performed, or better, we performed numerical simulation uh, uh, on um, centrifuge test. So, uh, here you can see the 10 meters diameter Turner beam centrifuge. Uh, on this centrifuge, a shaking table were, uh, was put and on this shaking table, we used we, we, um, a laminar box. This laminar box with, uh, was uh, located. This is a special container uh, that has a special walls in order to reduce boundary effects as much as possible. And we put in, um, inside this uh, uh, laminar box uh, a uh, tunnel soil system, of course, uh, uh, a reduced scale tunnel soil systems. So in this picture, you can see the shaking table, the walls of the container of the laminar box, the soil inside and the tunnel. A lot of instruments were put in, uh, inside the soil, above all accelerometers. On the, uh, at the base of the container, on the shaking table and along the walls of the container. Uh, moreover, LBDT uh, displacements uh, transducers were put on the soil surface and strain gauge on the, uh, on the tube representing the tunnel. We investigated above all uh, um, the response of this system along these three alignments, the tunnel alignment, the free field alignment, and the reference alignment. Um, our um, challenge uh, was uh, to uh, um, to, uh, to validate the numerical, our numerical uh, model, model. So here you can see the, um, the, alloy, uh, the aluminum alloy tube representing the tunnel and the deployment of the model tunnel during sand deposition. Here, you can see the strain gauges on the tube in order to uh, evaluate the bending moment on the tube. Uh, the soil used was the well, the very famous Leighton Buzzard uh, so, uh, sand, uh, a lot of static and dynamic laboratory tests were performed on this uh, on this uh, sand here you in this table you can see the main para parameters of the soil and the tunnel um, five uh, uh, sinusoidal inputs were applied were uh, applied uh, at the base of the model they were eq1 2 3 4 and 5 uh, they um, present different frequencies and different pHa, so a different amplitude, as you can see also in these uh, figures. So here you can see the comparison between experimental and numerical results. This is our FEM mode along the three alignments 
tunnel alignments, free field alignments and reference alignments, uh, considering the different uh, accelerometers. As you can see, there is uh, mm, a very good uh, agreement between experimental and numerical results. Uh, while here you can see the numerical results in terms of maximum acceleration versus the depth mm, zeta along the tunnel alignments. We can observe that the maximum acceleration reduce, reduced along the tunnel. So the tunnel has a beneficial effect on the site uh, on the um, on local site response hmm? uh, here there is the comparison between the experimental and numerical results and we uh, made the comparison between experimental and numerical results also in terms of bending moments on the tunnel uh, in that case, we compare the experimental uh, re uh, results not only with the numeric, our numerical results, but also with the results that we can, uh, uh, we can obtain it considering the elastic SSI solutions by Wang and Pension. Once more, um, a good uh, a good results uh, a good comparison was obtained. Apart from in some cases, but maybe the strain gauges um, didn't work uh, always well. Uh, finally. Uh, by means of our uh, FEM modeling, we uh, can uh, observe, uh, observe also, um, predict also the uh, segments at the soil surface and then compare the, uh, our um, values with the experimental ones. So, with a numerical, of course, with a numerical simulation, uh, we can capture to different aspects of the tunnel soil system behavior. So, uh, as regards the elastic SSI solutions, uh, as regards the, the, the longitudinal deformations, soil springs are used along the length of the tunnel, which is assumed to be a beam. As regards the ovaling deformation of circular tunnels and breaking deformation of rectangular tunnels, uh, lining forces uh, uh, that are bending, seismic bending moments, uh, seismic axial forces uh, uh, can be obtained uh, on the basis of, the, uh, of a flexibility ratio. So uh, that involves, of course, uh, the soil stiffnesses, uh, stiffness and the tunnel stiffness. Here you can see the expression of the maximum bending moment and the maximum axial force um, developed uh, by Wang for full slip and no slip conditions at the tunnel soil interface. Of course, these uh, expressions depend of, on the flexibility ratio F and, uh, of course, they depend on the uh, maximum soil shear um, strain, gamma max. Here I reported the pension solutions for full slip and non-slip condition uh, conditions at the soil tunnel interfaces. So, now I would like to speak uh, uh, about our numerical analysis. Once more, I will show you a case history involving the Catania underground. Uh, Catania is uh, characterized by a uh, high seismic uh, hazard, as uh, I said uh, previously. Uh, 
this, the scenario earthquake is uh, the January 11th, 1693 earthquakes, earthquake. Um, the epicenter uh, was in the sea along the Ibleo Maltese Fault. In that case, more than 40,000 people died and 45 cities and or villages were destroyed. A similar earthquake occurred in, in 1169. And here you can see the Ibleo Maltese Fault uh, with a numerical um, sta uh, analysis with a lot of numerical analysis, uh, we can reproduce the expected time in history, acceleration time histories uh, along these alignments and at different depth. This is the city of Catania. Um, uh, in Catania, other seismic events uh, generally occur. occur. Uh, they are um, due to the uh, volcano activity of Mount Etna, the highest volcano in Europe. But generally, the, the seismic events due to Mount Etna as, uh, are less important than the uh, earthquakes due to the Ibleo Maltese fault. Uh, so, uh, the, the case history that now I will show you um, regards a section, a transversal section, next to SI3 boreal. This boreal, we are once more along the Nesima Mr. Bianco line. Here you can see the FEM model uh, and in particular in this case the tunnel is in between of two soil layer, layers, layers one and two, uh, that are characterized by a uh, mm, mm, very different stiffnesses. In particular, uh, we develop, um, here you can see the VS versus Zeta profile uh, with layer one, layer two, and the, the value of uh, VS. Uh, we performed also dynamic test, laboratory dynamic test in order to test the soil non-linearity. Non and we defined an impedance ratio I equal to Vs1 rho 1 over Vs2 rho 2. Uh, this ratio is equal, uh, is equal to 2.6 for the real case. But we would like to um, realize uh, other models, R9 models, changing the value of I in order to, de to, um, to detect the influence of the impedance, impedance ratio. Uh, so in order to detect the influence of soil heterogeneity. Uh, here you can see the results in terms of seismic bending moments on the tunnels for the four models. Of course, model three is the real model. Model one is uh, refers to a homogeneous soil, so I is equal to one. So here you can see a very uniform trend in terms of bending moment and also in terms, but also in terms of axial force. Of course, with the increasing all of the of I that is with increasing with the soil heterogeneity, we can observe a non-homogeneous trend and the value of the lining force increases and we have the peak value along the soil discontinuity. Uh, here you can see the comparison between the maximum Bend, numerical bending moment and the maximum bending moment obtained with the Wang and Pension solution. Actually, Wang and Pension solutions 
were developed for homogeneous soil. So we mod, mod, we use we carefully use this expression, uh, um, changing the value of this, um, the soil shear strain. So we used a soil shear strain for the upper for layer one and another soil shear strains for the layers two. But generally, we obtain a good agreement. Uh, um, not perfect good agreement was obtained for models seven, nine, four, and ten, uh, characterized by a um, higher, um, a more evident soil heterogeneity. We obtained quite good results also comparing uh, the, ax the numerical axial force and the analytical ones, especially with one solution, uh, but not for uh, the models characterized by a very high soil heterogeneity. Pensin solution gave us uh, very um, low values, uh, this results was also found by other researchers. Here you can see the, um, the trend of the maximum bending moment on the tunnel uh, versus the, uh, I, uh, the impedance ratio I. Of course, when I is uh, near to one, so homogeneous soil, we obtain the lowest value of M. Uh, uh, otherwise, the, the value of M increases, increases. Finally, I would like to speak to you about another analysis involving a fully coupled tunnel soil structure systems. Uh, in that case, the transversal section that uh, we studied uh, was next to Boreal S4. In that case, over the tunnel, there was um, a structure, a typical residential uh, building. Uh, then, uh, here, um, I, you can see uh, the trend of the ratio RA, where, uh, with the depth zeta. Ra is the ratio between the maximum acceleration at a certain depth zeta over the maximum acceleration at the base of the model, at the bedrock. Uh, we estimated for uh, one acceler uh, ac uh, input at the base, of course, uh, the trend of these uh, ratio for different configurations, free field consider configuration, the configuration with only the tunnel or with only the building and the real configuration with the tunnel plus build the building. We observe that uh, the presence of the tunnel reduce the acceleration as well as, in this case, the presence of uh, the building. So, the tunnel at the building had a beneficial effect in terms of uh, local site response. Uh, we performed other analysis with uh, different uh, inputs at the base of the model, and we Mm, generally observed a reduction of the maximum acceleration uh, along the tunnel. Finally, we perform a parametric uh, analysis changing the depth of the tunnel and the distance of the building, the distance between the building and the tunnel. So we uh, considered the, these four models. And we used 30 in, um, inputs at the base of the model. All the input uh, were scaled in amplitude in order to have the same peak horizontal acceleration equal to 0.1 g. Uh, 
So uh, they differ each others only for the predominant frequency. So for the two uh, tunnel distance, del delta equal to zero meters and delta equal to 20 meters, we uh, compute the ratio Fs over Fm. Fs is the natural frequency of the soil tunnel uh, above ground system while fm is the predominant frequency of the input we consider the first second and third natural frequencies of the systems uh, if this ratio is near to one resonance phenomena um, could occur uh, if this ratio is less than 0.4, the probability to have resonance phenomena um, is uh, um, very low. So, uh, for the uh, for the um, for the input for the expected resonance uh, uh, cases, we um, we observe. Uh, generally um, am amplifications at the soil surface while for the unexpected resonance cases uh, we observe very often uh, the amplification at the soil surface um, as regards the tunnel the effects of the tunnel depth uh, in that case the shallower the tunnel the, um, the lower the acceleration at the soil surface. Uh, sorry. And the building ha, um, had a, a, a beneficial effect too in terms of uh, um, acceleration at the soil surface. So, in conclusion, Accurate soil geotechnical characterization is a key aspect for a realistic evaluation of the tunnel soil above ground structure behavior. The usual number of preliminary investigations could um, has to be generally increased, could be not sufficient. But low cost investigations during tunneling are also very useful uh, such as the procedure that I showed uh, you. Of course, as uh, a simple early warning alarm system. Centrifuge tests are powerful tools for studying these systems. When the, oh, sorry, when the tunnel crosses a soil discontinuity, special attention has to be devoted to the maximum soil shear strain reaches at the soil discontinuity. Hmm? The latter influences the tunnel seismic bending moments significantly. Fully coupled analysis cannot be avoided and are now possible with a reasonable computational effort by means of finite element codes, for example. Uh, the tunnel generally has a beneficial effect on the local site response causing a reduction of the seismic wave that reaches the above ground structures. Thank you for your attention and uh, I hope to see you in uh, my island, so in Sicily island. Thank you, Professor Maria. I think uh, it was quite engaging session and uh, you were able to correlate the field situation with the numerical uh, technique that you have adopted. So there was a perfect correlation and then you have also performed the centrifuge test. So it was a combination of all experimental, numerical and field studies, uh, which is rare, rarest of the rare event uh, that you can you, you combine all in your presentation. I'm sure that uh, your uh, session must have been benefited to all the researchers, scholars, and students. Uh, and uh, before I
close let me uh, read some questions that has been asked by the audience okay so, so it is there in the chat box you can you can also see from your side uh jeffrey has asked in the tunnel soil interaction analysis how much error is considered acceptable for the fem analysis uh, can you sorry in uh, yeah. i don't understand in the tunnel soil interaction yeah. how much error it is considered as um uh, of course for example in terms of um, in terms of uh, millimeters of course in terms of uh, displacements uh, uh, some um, one order for the uh, bending moment and the axial forces hmm? I don't know if I have. Yeah, uh, I think the question is not very clear. Yes, uh, millimeters from the displacements. Uh, uh, I have uh, maybe I, I can I can show again my presentation if you want. Uh, can you see? Yeah. Okay. So. Mm. And in terms of accelerometers, of course, for example, here, mm, they have to, um, they have to be uh, of, mm, uh, you, you have, uh, you have to superimpose one to the other mm, to, uh, in order to say, okay, this is a good comparison of course it's uh, quite strange to have uh, exactly the same um, to have a perfect agreement considering all the quantities that you have uh, to check uh, for example in this analysis we have a very very good agreement in terms of acceleration response uh, but we don't have a perfect agreement uh, in terms of uh, uh, settlements, displacements, uh, but these are million. But we can say that this agreement is also uh, good because here you can see these are millimeters. Hmm? And uh, another question. There's a question by Rahul. What is the role of FEM in tunnel soil interaction? I think uh, that has that has already been explained in throughout the session. So uh, yes, I, I think that this is the powerful, um, a very very important tool because, of course. Uh, centrifuge test uh, or sh 1G shaking table test, etc., are very expensive. Uh, it's very important to monitor uh, real structure too, but uh, in some areas, such as Catania area, um, we we f um, we um, don't have uh, earthquakes very very frequently. It's a good thing for us. Uh, so to monitor real structure um, can be not sufficient. So fem model, I think, it are uh, fem models are very very powerful tool. Tools also because you can uh, um, you can analyze the different aspects hmm, of the whole model and you can perform analysis on the fully coupled model. Yeah, I think uh, I think in numerical tools nowadays, like if you want to analyze the complicated. Uh, soil structure interaction analysis then there is no other option but you have to go for numerical analysis so yes uh, there is another question by Paula Juncha what are the softwares used for numerical comparison for 
soil structure interaction soil tunnel interaction maybe uh, uh, you can tell your software what you have used in your uh, analysis uh, yes because i was uh, also we, very much curious to know that which software you have used i use the uh, alina software Okay. Uh, my university uh, uh, ha, have, um, has the license uh, to use this uh, software and this is a quite um, nice software because um, my colleagues of uh, structural engineers use, uh, uses, uh, use, to, um, use this software too. Yeah, that's great. I think this is one of the most powerful software that I've seen. That, I think that uh, the software is not so important. You can use one software or one <laughs> another software because fem, fem codes are very similar. Mm. Mm. It's very important to choose as best as possible boundary conditions, initial condition, uh, soil uh, uh, material constitutive laws, uh, and then you can use uh, the the fem code that you can use that you have at uni at university, etc. Or you can buy. Yeah, this is the normal procedure. Like uh, either funding should be there from the university, or we have to write research project proposal and submit to government so that we can get money and then we can work on the idea that we have proposed. So uh, the second option is most preferred by the researchers because uh, they have to generate fund from uh, for their work. Uh, there is another question, uh, I think, by uh, we need to see whether the question relates to your presentation or uh, it is out of the box. How many times is considered? Uh, as uh, I, mm, in some cases, for example, in the last cases, I used um, 30, 30 earthquakes. Uh, in other cases, we used seven inputs and so on. In the experimental cases, we use it, mm, mm, actually only sinusoidal inputs and so on. Uh, it depends on uh, the mm, parameters that, I, that we would like uh, to focus our attention. Mm -hmm. Of course, we use, in any case, we use uh, a lot of uh, inputs um uh, starting uh in some cases start, uh, we start with shen with the scenario earthquakes the um 1693 earthquakes but after we used a lot of other acceleration time history at the base of the model because we uh, one uh, it's not sufficient to, to use only one earthquake. We don't have a lot of uh, uh, records in Catania. Uh, so we used uh, or artificial inputs or inputs recorded in other area uh, and so uh, adapted for our area. Yeah, the idea is like to give different uh, frequency acceleration and time to your problem. So yes. mathematically, it can be uh, you can cover all range of frequencies, time duration, and the amplitude of earthquake, so that you can analyze the problem uh, in in a very rigorous manner. So uh, I think uh, that must be your idea to get uh, data from other source and then put in your uh, problem statement. There is a uh, There is a there is a question. Uh, I think I can I can take take up this last question because another uh, session is lined up, so audience are waiting there also. And I will share your uh, con uh, contact detail and email ID so that uh, they, the uh, the participants can get in touch with you over email, and they can write. Yes. If they want to, uh, yes. Yes. Want yes. To write in, to you. in the last slide, 
I'll um, I'll show you yeah, a report. My email. Please send me email uh, if you want to discuss uh, uh, with me about. Um, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, if you want to discuss with me about uh, something. Yeah, on definitely. Uh, because you have done extensive work using centrifuge. You see, uh, there are certain things like centrifuge modeling, and then I know a lot, lot more questions will be there for you, or maybe experts will be interested to interact with you in future for their research work, for their uh, proposals, and other things. Uh, rest of the question, I can see a lot of uh, positive comments are coming about your session. Uh, they are saying that it was a beautiful presentation and. Uh, lot of lot of appreciation is there so uh, uh, with sorry that for uh, my, sorry for my english <laughs> no no it's okay like uh, 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 technically we are we, we were able to understand uh, uh, and uh, you know it's all about uh, the ascent that we follow in our country so even my english is also not very good <laughs> somehow i am managing so I, I uh, now thank you very much uh, for okay. sharing time with us and uh, now I hand over the task to co-chair to uh, give vote of thanks and close this session uh, so that we can move to the next session which is lined up by Dr. Glenda. Thank you very much ma'am for taking up the queries of our audience. On behalf of School of Civil Engineering, lovely professional university, Indian Geotechnical Society, Jalandhar chapter, and Department of Civil Engineering, NIT Jalandhar, and from the entire team of faculty members and students, I'm thankful to you for spending time with us. We wish you all the good health and prosperous life ahead, ma'am. Thank you once again. Ma'am, as a token of appreciation, please accept our e-certificate of appreciation. Thank you. Professor Maria, can you confirm that you can see? Yes, I can see. That's great. So thank you thank once you. again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, you, very much. thank you. Wish you good luck.